This is it, the granddaddy of all color e-ink smartphones and e-ink smartphones alike. This is the Hisense A5 Pro CC. Let's check it out. <laughs> you can see it is highly reflective. Now everyone has been saying, well, take the screen protector off. That is slightly irrelevant because if you see here, the screen protector is reflective, but the phone glass itself is equally as reflective. You can see by the earpiece and the uh, camera there. So it actually doesn't matter if you take the screen protector off because both the glass that's overlaying the entire screen and the screen protector alike are fully glass mirror reflective surfaces. But aside from that, this is a phone you're going to want to use day to day. Now it does have a glow light, you can see right there. A lot of people complain as to why we leave the glow light on. This is because of a few things. One, it's a smartphone, it should be nice and bright and vibrant. And two, if you have the glow light off, it's actually pretty hard to see. You can see here that there's lots of reflectivity. You can see me in the shot right there. And it's rather dark. So we like to actually keep the glow light on just a little bit to take the edge off. And that allows you to get an overall better experience for the screen. It actually reduces some of the reflectivity if you put the glow light on. Now, for those of you that don't know, this is running e-ink and it is color. As you can see right here, you have reds, blues, greens, etc. It is showing over 4,000 colors. Now if you swipe down the top, you will see that you have a lot of things that you're going to be using on a day-to-day -day basis. You have a flashlight, that all works. You have a fingerprint sensor, that works. The camera works. Everything works. It is a normal smartphone, so you shouldn't, shouldn't see this as there's a lot of drawbacks, because there aren't. The only drawback is that it's not running an LCD LED panel that refreshes 60 frames a second. That's not what it's doing, but it does have hotspot, data communication, it has ringer modes, it has screenshot, it has Wi-Fi, it has everything you're going to want. NFC, Bluetooth, screen recording. It's absolutely loaded with features and this thing should be considered a smartphone first and foremost, not an e-ink device. Now this thing is running Android, which means it is a regular Android device through and through. In that regard, it's not going to be any different than any other phone. But Hisense does have a few proprietary things we're going to look at right now. So if you swipe to the left, you get HiSmart. This one shows you some shortcuts, screen time, read later, weather, sports and health, stuff like that. Little panel kind of system they got going there. You can swipe up as well, and this gives you into some more panels. You can see that you have different things here, WeChat, subscription, moments, favorite, and you can add and remove panels as you see fit as well here. This is all stuff that's not really necessary, it's just that they put that on there for you to have as kind of a gift from Hisense, their own proprietary swing on things because otherwise if you do break it down and you go to the settings it's simply just a regular smartphone. You do have everything here that is pretty much standardized across all smartphones that you will see day to day although except buttons button actually introduces e-ink button so you can see here do some reading um, well you don't have to read every single thing nor will I read everything out for you but the e-ink button is a button on the left side of the phone it does certain things in certain situations so for example if you're on a blank screen and you press the uh, button on the left which is the e-ink button it's going to screen capture you can use it to turn off and on the notes if you press and hold it on a book it'll open up uh, you know dictionary recommendations you can choose it to be page flip you can assign it to do a lot of different things and that's really nice because it's kind of catering to the whole e-ink sort of thing you know it is e-ink so you want an e-ink button to kind of give you a little bit of a difference between a regular LCD LED smartphone. Now if you choose the short press to be something, for example, screen refresh, we can assign it to that. If I press it once, it's going to screen refresh, which is really nice because this phone is very prone to staining. Now if I want to choose a double click, which is the second version, we can choose 
a clear smooth mode switch and we'll touch on that in a second here. So if I double press that, I can actually switch between smooth mode and clear mode. By pressing that, you can see it's all sped up, but there's lots of staining now. And that's where my single press goes into play and it wipes everything away. Now the modes are very important because they've actually increased the amount of modes by two. So you not only have clear mode, which is your clearest mode, it gives you the best overall look, but the phone is actually pretty slow. But you see there's virtually no staining in the background. And then you have balanced mode, which is an even mix between having a good overall look to your device and good performance. But you can see there's some mild staining in the background. Clicking further, you have smooth mode, which allows everything to go really smooth. And the last mode being speed mode. This is the mode you're gonna wanna be on if you're flipping through things, because now look how fast this device gets. When you start in speed mode, this is what you're going to expect. The device is actually quite snappy in this mode and you can expect very quick inputs. And you can see scrolling is pretty much that is the fast, you know, it might not be amazing if you're comparing it against a standard flagship smartphone, but that is pretty fast for e-ink, especially running color. PDFs are very useful because they show a lot of color, if that is indeed you have a color PDF. Uh, this has been the one we've used for quite some time. It's because we want to keep it constant and show you the quality on each individual device. Now, the speed will change based on what you have chosen here, clear mode, speed mode, etc., like we touched on earlier. So you will see the quality either go up or down and the refresh go up or down. But it is very nice to start seeing some real color on e-ink devices. And if you choose that speed mode, you're getting pretty realistically good speeds on this device. Inertia is there, refreshing is at a minimum, ghosting is there, but not too bad. Colors shine and they don't dilute themselves when you move it around or anything. The reading experience is essentially whatever you make it. Because this is running Android, you can download any app you want. They're all gonna do different things. So you can see this one is a preloaded Chinese reader app, but you can download anything you want. Aldeco, Moon Plus Reader, etc. This is just to show you what it actually looks like on here. And again, we have that glow light on just a little bit to take the edge off, because if we were to turn that off, the reality sets in that in a well-lit room, this thing is not too easy to see on the eyes. You do need to keep that glow light on to some degree to take the edge off and really let the colors shine and the black and white contrast pop. Obviously, we go on our phones to read news, go to websites, stuff like that. So you can see this is what you are to expect when you go to a news publication like us. Website, Goody Reader. Get the headers and thumbnails like so. See, it's a little bit slow because we're on smooth mode. If we turn it over to speed mode, now we're really into some speed. Quality is heavily reduced, but the refreshing is also heavily reduced. You can do your long presses, have your web search, copy paste, click on an article, jumps right over to it full color the whole way through. We will be doing a dedicated camera test in the future on this device, but we do have HDR capabilities on, off, or auto, and we do have colors running at full frame rate. However, when you do press the buttons here, you can go to the different modes to speed it up even more, like so. However, if you try to go to clear mode, you can see that it's just gonna spaz out on you, and this is because E-Ink can simply not keep up with delivering live camera refreshes on your screen and still give you any sort of quality. There's just no way. So that's why you want to keep it on speed mode or you want to keep it on smooth mode. 2020 is E-Ink smartphones. We're not even halfway through the year and we've already seen a bunch of them get released. Today we're going to look at the top 5 E-Ink smartphones of 2020 so far. Number five, the Kingro K1. One of the most exciting entries on this list, but one of the most disappointing, which is why it lands in last place. The Kingro K1 was a five inch. That is honestly 
the fastest e-ink refresh rate we've ever seen on a device thus far. Uh, a close comparison, if not close second, would be the Onyx Books Max 3 with X mode. But honestly, that was pretty phenomenal. You can see that you're able to run full videos on this without much compromise. Dedicated speaker, USB-C, fingerprint sensor, 6 gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage, front camera, rear camera, e-ink button, NFC, Bluetooth, everything you're going to want is on this phone. You don't have to approach this phone as an e-ink device first and foremost. It should be thought of a smartphone first and foremost with an color e-ink screen on it. This thing is fully capable of doing anything you're going to want it to do. You just have to ask yourself if you're ready to live with that compromise of super long battery life, but it comes at a price because the viewing experience is going to be drastically different than your standard flagship smartphone. For a full review of the Hisense A5 Pro CC, this is Peter, and if you guys have any other questions, comments, or concerns, let us know.